Bride Rules MMA. With your host, Tommy D, and the Professor Omar. Special thank you to our sponsors, ADK Fightwear, Black Hole Jiu Jitsu, Madama Jiu Jitsu, and of course, Fightbook MMA. Hey, what is up, everybody? We are finally back here in the new year. It's 2019, and Pride Rules MMA is finally back. We missed you guys after Christmas. We missed you guys before Christmas, and we missed you guys after New Year's. But here we are. You're the man, the Reverend Tommy D, is here with you, joined by my two buddies, El Profesor Omar Sangarima and our great producer, Rudy Lara. Guys, it is a pleasure to see you and speak to you. I hope your holidays were good. Omar, how was your Christmas and your New Year, sir? It was good. Uh, and my three kings, that thanks for asking. You uh, you racist bastard. But um, it was uh, it was good. Everything went fine, and we finally took the tree down yesterday. And you know I'm not lying. So yeah. Oh, that's good. I mean, I, I could see uh, I could see Kristen went out and bought you uh, the Zach De La Roche um, <laughs> hoodie. So now you're looking like the lead singer of uh, Rage Against the Machine. That's great. Mixed with a little bit of pre Bruce Jenner. Oh my God. Post Chaz Bono. That's proud. Oh, <laughs> found a way to weave them two of them together. Well, you know, I, we're we're allies here at Pride Rules, considering the name. So uh, hey, look, man, you have a lot of monikers. I mean, Chief Buffalo Balls. I, mean, you, <laughs> I, you can't get you. I hate you. I'm just getting called Chief Buffalo Balls at work. Thanks. You got it, Rudy, buddy. Um. We're going to let everybody know here. Congratulations. Rudy found out he is having a baby girl. Oh, shit. Thanks. <laughs> I hope she's not going to be born on a Monday night, Rudy. <laughs> no, man. No. Thank you. And my dog's doing awesome, too. Yes. Yes. That's great. The dog's doing it. You see, that's what happens when this show is getting ready to come back on the air. The, the universal lines, everything goes back to normal, and we can get back to talking about some great MMA action. So, guys, while we were on our little holiday hiatus, <clears throat> there was a fight that happened over in Japan. At first, it wasn't on. Then it was on. And then it was fixed. Floyd Mayweather, I'm going to have to look up this gentleman's name because, you know, I didn't really speak Japanese before we started doing this show, and I don't speak much of it now. Tenshin um, Nasukawa. Yeah, Tenshin Nasukawa. So, I mean, look. That if you don't think that that fight was fake, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, Santa Claus is definitely real, and yeah, Bruce Jenner really is a woman. If you actually think that that fight was real, because it most certainly was not. But that's not what we're here to talk about tonight, because we talk about real fights here. That's why we don't talk about Bob Sapp or anything like that. Okay. That's right, Omar. I'm going right after you with that one. God, <laughs> Chad um, Bono and now Bob Sapp, you have no cooth, sir. You have no, none. None, none whatsoever. Um, this afternoon, Connor decided to take Twitter and put out an open challenge to Mr. Nasukawa. He wants to fight in Japan. Nasukawa wants to fight to be kickboxing. Any way you slice it, it's fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. Do you think Dana does it? I do. I really do. He was crazy enough to loan out people to go fight in Pride. Um, yeah, but that was before the UFC was actually a household name. You know what I mean? This, this is goofy enough to work. You get cross promotion. How deeply, you know, into that Japanese market are they really in? Uh, One FC is making moves and slight noise over there. I feel as though they want to establish more of a presence, and this is the perfect situation to do it. It's a freak show. It absolutely would be. I mean, it should only happen um, on a, in Japan. In Japan, in a two-hour window, right around New Year's Eve. That's when all bets are off, and you can like allow wild things to happen. It's almost like a seance, or you know, like uh, you know, All Hallows Eve. You know, certain certain auspicious times like that where you can have to have ridiculous fights, and it's totally okay. Or fixed ones, as we saw. So I think, yeah, why not, man? And what what else is there for 
for our boy to do in the UFC. I mean, there's real fights, but we, he's not looking for a real fight. Who knows? He's using this to then piggyback, and he'll end up, him and Mayweather will end up fighting down the road or for Ryzen. Who the fuck knows? But it's one of those. Yeah, why not? Right there, that leads me to my next question for you. Do you think he's pining for this fight? Because you think maybe, just maybe he knows he has no smoke for anybody left in that lightweight division. None whatsoever. Lightweight or, or welterweight or 145. Like I could name, you know, three to five people in each division that would really look like they, they would smoke him at this point. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy how far he, he it, well, not really crazy because if you look at how long he's been training for actual MMA fights again, I mean, that one, that one year for boxing really fucked him up in terms of getting him out of his groove, I think. And and it's not one of the, and the rest of the division was always coming for him. He had that crystalline mo- set of moments where I think he, he went on a crazy run and God bless him. But the rest of the division was always going to be out to get him. And uh, for, because he, he was writing checks with his mouth. And I think now they're coming to cash him. He shouldn't stay. He's not gonna, he's just looking for paydays at this point, which I'll never begrudge him. Cause if I could, I would let me fight a Japanese boy on, on national Japanese TV, you know, I'd, I'd let him liver shot me to death. I don't care. Get paid. But aside from that, what else does he have? Who does he beat in those divisions? I don't know. Do you think Dana tries to ride his coattails like he did with Chuck? Yes. Because to me, I think Chuck, I mean, he did do better than I think Connor would in Japan. I think yeah. those lighter weight guys will kick his fucking head off. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, especially that 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 region of the world is known for lighter fighters. It just goes demographically. Like you're gonna have, you know, their their slighter build. Just you know, overall, this is science. I'm not being a racist or whatever, but it's just so you're gonna have you know wild amounts of lightweights and, and lighter weights coming from from that region of the world. There's some. There's probably five tough motherfuckers that we've never heard of that could beat the shit out of Conor McGregor that are that are trying to get into it to like one FC or trying to get into rise. And you, you know how the, the training culture is there. Um, if he does it as a, as a K one esque match, I think he, he gets smoked. Um, even just stand up. Um, and if he do if he goes into MMA, who the, who the hell knows, man, you know, give tension some time grappling. You know, he's not a D one wrestler. I'm talking about McGregor. You know, it's not like we're going to be yeah. wowed by, you know, Dylan Dennis is teaching him grappling, though, so watch out, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, I think for, for that, I think Nasakawa should just jump on over to uh, to D.C. and start training with Ryan Hall, 50-50 position, just yeah. negate that whole Dennis garbage right there. <laughs> but but the, the statement that I kind of wanted to make about this is a fight like this, they brought over the biggest boxer in the world mm. to Japan, you knew the fight was fixed. You uh, knew it was fake. Yeah. Just from the way that kid went down. Yeah. Just from the way that kid went down. He My like dad, sprang back. Yeah. Some of those shots. I was like, oh, stop selling it that much. It and tough. if you looked at it, the kid was just as fast as Floyd. As, if not more so. I mean, yeah. there's a 20-year um, age gap or so, close to it. So, So do you think... That if Connor decides to go over there, Japan, you know, the Yakuza looks at young tension and says, bitch, you better fucking win. They might, they might take the reins off. And I think if they did that, if it had just been a stand up fight and they had allowed any sort of kicking, I think tension could have given Floyd a whole host of problems. I and think he was, gonna give, him, he was yeah. gonna give him problems just yep. with the boxing. Just the boxing. If they let that fight be real. Yeah, and you knew it wasn't real. Yeah, it was. It was not real, whatsoever. Um, and it was like it was not real, and it was bad, not real. I mean, we we're both we're both fans of all sorts of MMA. We know that there's been fixed fights, that, and there's probably fixed fights that we don't like. We, we can't really. You have to sit there and dissect. This wasn't one of them. Mm-mm. This was a horrible work, a horrendous work. I've seen better shoots. Uh, quote unquote, right? I'm probably butchering the the nomenclature in pro wrestling. Like I've seen better, you know, put together fake fights that we know are fake well, fights. No, a, a, real shoot, fight. a shoot, a real is a shoot real. is a real fight, right? That it turns into a, a work. Fight. A work is the fake. Okay, fight. so then I've seen better, much better works. Um, All right, that ready? Look much realer. 
You ready? Yeah. Mike Tyson punching Shawn Michaels looked more real than Floyd Mayweather knocking out Tenshin Nazakawa. And he also went ass over tea kettle, didn't he? Like he sold it. Yeah. He sold it super well. His hair went nuts. Well, okay. Mike Tyson punching you in the face. Yes, I would probably make myself do 65 backflips if I could. Probably. Floyd Mayweather hitting me in the face. I might be able to just at least stand up for a little bit. Yeah. You know, like, come on. Like first hitting round. In the body. First like, round. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, man. It's just. First round. Yeah. I hope nobody took any action on that fight whatsoever, but I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong because you know that you think, t- you think the money team made a belt for that one too, like they made for the Connor fight, knowing that that Connor wasn't going to win. And he doesn't even merit suspenders for that garbage, like much less a belt. Like just just get the fuck out of there. And he was laughing the whole time. Like this is, it was bad because there were some decent fights on that card, like some decent real fights on that card. Um, I know you're not but, counting Gabby Garcia as one of them. What do you? Th- I mean, I said real fights, not not weird, wild freak shows. You know what I mean? So. It was, it, it was what it was. However, what really just boggles my mind is why our boys is is trying to get in on that weird type of action. Well, you know because I mean? don't you remember when uh, when the fight with Mayweather was announced, Connor, of course, has to open his mouth, and the kid was like, oh, "I'll avenge him for you," you know, meaning he was going to beat Floyd. So now, of course, Connor wants to go after the guy who Floyd beat, who Floyd beat do, now I mean, this I could do, off, I could do it for this, Twitter mentions but it this is off the wall it might not be this is just off my fucking whacked out brain but for some odd reason when it comes to MMA sometimes when I think things they actually really fucking happen yeah. do you think this was all a work for Connor to go to Ryzen I could see it and, and what I would also like to see, uh, which we'll never get, there's uh, paperwork to see if, if Floyd is now some somehow part owner. Because that would really make a lot of sense. I'm putting my tinfoil hat right the fuck on. I have my hoodie on, but the tinfoil fits right on top here. Who knows, man? There's no way they paid Floyd $100 million. I don't know what he actually made, no. but there's no way they made that. Unless, unless they the company unless is sold that. drugs, like uh, out, out at the gate, you know what I mean? Like here's some MDMA, here's some party favors to to watch this fight. Here's some mushrooms. So, what you do know? you think they pay Connor if he if this really happens? I personally think it's all smoke because Dana doesn't do the the well. He did the co promotion with the boxing. He was dealing with American. Dana is not going to want to go over there and do any deals with Japan. If, I he, really if, he didn't, so. if he didn't do him to get Fedor ever, he's not going to do him with Japan. He might loan out people. And he shit on Pride. When yeah. they bought out Pride, they were supposed to keep it around. They got rid of it. They sold it. They, they paid for a, a DVD library, basically. Yeah. Um, but I think they pay him a few mil. And he gets to, he gets to get his face exposed in a, in a market that potentially he's maybe had some difficulty. You know, he gets to sell some proper 12. Japanese people, they might not though, because Japanese people have actually good whiskey. So, yeah. so yeah, the Hibiki is is pretty legit. So I don't know if they if they get enticed. But they're to, also you know. they're also not flashy like he is. They don't spout off at the mouth like he does. They're very respectful people. So I mean, how popular in a good light is he over there? Probably, probably not. You know, I mean, the the Japanese culture has very distinct, like you said, very distinct feelings on manners and saving face and and granting face and being respectful. Um, they get down for a giant black dude. I mean, that's just mm-hmm. known, you know. So Bob, that's Mike Bob Tyson, Jack, Bob Mike Tyson, Tyson, Bob Jack, uh, Rampage Jackson. There's still an uber star over there. Uh, black kickboxers were always like, you know, loved and probably not in small ways fetishized over there. I mean, just to say, it, like, holy crap, you know, something we don't see every day. But aside from that, he could probably, but it would just be good to get his brand out there, you know, just some awareness. But I don't, I don't think Ryzen has that much cash, officially or unofficially. So I really just think it's it's just to do it to get the shine out east, you know. But it's a waste of time either way. Yeah, I I don't know. I it's hard for me to see Dana doing this with this bullshit 
ESPN deal mm. that they've got yeah. with that, you know, cooked up garbage fights that they're already starting. I I, I don't want to go off yeah. onto that because we didn't set Rudy off onto it. But all I'm going to say is Francis Ngannou, fucking Cain Velasquez, just get it out of my face. I don't oh, want to see it. I don't want to see it. When I saw it announced on the, yeah. the last pay-per-view, I was just like, wow. I, just, I don't want to see it. That's all I had to say was, was wow. I just... You know, I, I don't want to see it. Yeah. Just as much as I don't want to see Connor over in Ryzen. But you know what? If Connor, if you're going to go to Ryzen, stay there. <laughs> stay there. It won't happen. He's coming. We've back. already seen you get owned by Nate Diaz and Khabib. That's it. That's all we care about. Us Jersey fans would have loved to see Frankie Pecker slap the shit out of you. But you ran from that as fast as you could. You won't yeah. fight Max at 145 or 155 now because he's fully healthy. He's Go to Japan. Japan. Stay yeah. over there. Just stay there. Holloway would kill stay him, though. I think Holloway is a different, a different beast at this point. Now, yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. right about that. You know, the, the, the Irish have run their course in the UFC. You know, take your fucking proper 12 and your tell them or do. Move down the bench. Oh, no. Down the bench. And the racial tensions on the show are always delightful, Thomas. I'm just saying. He, he's know. just, you know what? Because he just brought out, it was like St. Patrick's Day every time his face was on the fucking screen. I mean, and it was just annoying. Pays for it. Pays for it. It, it got, it got, it pays the, for what? Yes, it pays for what? It, what it, oh, pay it, it paid to, to get into the room of the ESPN. Mm-hmm. I don't think that happens without. Without Connor, and that's why I think Dana White's always going to have a hard on for him, even if they're yeah. like a small one, like a half one. Let's see how successful that deal goes. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> they I already lo- they already lost the greatest champion that they've ever had in Demetrius Johnson to one FC, who signed the deal with TNT for Christ's sakes, the fucking superstation. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean. It's, it's going to so, be on right after the NBA fucking finals. It's so weird <laughs> animal right now. The the landscape for MMA never ceases to amaze me. It really doesn't. It's crazy. You're going to go on fucking, they're going to put the UFC on, on ESPN after High Lie at fucking 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> hey, don't knock High Lie. All right. It's up there with cricket for me. I enjoy a good High Lie game. <laughs> you know, I mean, Jesus Christ. I I'll use lie. the same line. Before, with this situation, Randy Couture's jerk-off video got more views than any of these ESPN shows are going to do <sighs> with this new app or on television. I let, guarantee it. Let go of Randy Couture's dog like, in your mind, man. Just let it Just let go. He didn't, unfortunately, <laughs> for the video. It's I'm MMA news. It. It's, it's all, it all ties in with MMA. It has that wrestler's grip strength, so it, and it's all about ratings, right? So that right. video probably will do more views than any of the UFCs that the ESP. That ESP I'm thinking about Randy Couture's dick. Like that's really what I'm trying to beg you not to keep putting into my to my mind. You know, because then at, right after that, I automatically think of other <laughs> other MMA dicks we've seen, and Phil Baroni comes to mind. You know, and that thing was a monster. That thing was a, was a fucking. T Rex just rising. I don't know. Chris, Chris Lieben knocked it off, and uh, Pete Sell choked it out. Yeah, I mean, not the dick. I think no, if the dick well, had anything Baroni to do with it, Baroni I mean, himself is okay. A dick. I'm just saying, <laughs> if that dick could have been tagged in, it might have been a different, a different picture. <laughs> fucking Joey Ryan now. <laughs> I'm telling you, eyes <laughs> around his waist like a tail, like a Super Saiyan. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, no, stop. Next topic, I'm not talking yeah. dick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> enough, on, enough on Connor finally leaving the UFC, like we all have, have said. And I mean, there is there a reason for him to come back to the UFC after if he does actually do this fight? There's no, no reason. No, and there's no narrative either. Like the last, his last comeback had a slight narrative. This one would be just a complete and utter retread, and I think you'd see a difference with uh, his his selling power. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I mean, they're, they're, what they're definitely going to do once, I feel, if if things line up the right way, they're going to throw him on ESPN once, potentially. They very well might. So, in order, you know, do you that, think that, so? 
I think so. I think they'll they'll get, you know, um, one good use out of him that way. Because if he does do something stupid and then it's going to be a squash match, it's going to be it's, like, yeah, well, it's going to be Artem versus Connor. Oh, no, 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 no. The loser leaves town, and then they yeah. just both ride off into the sunset in a nice carriage. Exactly. Run by a mule. Um, exactly. It'll be something, though. No. We'll see what happens with that. Do I really care? No. Am I going to be interested to watch it? Nope. Thank you, God, for the internet. Yeah. All right. Saying. So let's jump on to the next topic. So, as you guys saw, the last event. Amanda Nunes came out there and dusted Chris Cyborg in 51 seconds. It's about time we saw a female fighter knock out a man in the UFC. Oh my God. It I, really is. We're just going every every which way but loose today with the LGBTQ. Dude, community. it's a new year. I got to bring it back to our first year doing a show. Remember where it was just reckless abandonment? Just say okay. whatever we wanted to say just for the shock value. We said some wild shit. In our- we did. <laughs> we did. And you know what? It's time to come back. Fight book needs it. All right. Fight book okay. needs it. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's piss up every community. Okay. okay. <laughs> let's go. Um, All right. So Chris Cyborg is kind of sort of demanding a rematch, and Dana threw cold water on it. Of course. This is one of the times where I actually agree with him. Why? Because it wasn't a contest. It wasn't like the Jose Aldo 13-second knockout from Conor McGregor where it was just one lucky punch. She beat the shit out of Cyborg in 51 seconds. She's doing it because she's been a difficult contract negotiator, though. That's what Dana White's doing this for. I, I would, I would, he has enough kindling to say, hey, this was not a contest. However, at the end of the day, the real reason... Is because Homegirl would go on Shab Show with her boyfriend and talk about how difficult getting fights in the UFC would be. And that works as long as you're running the gauntlet and knocking bitches out. But the second that you're no longer in the driver's seat with the murderous rampage that you were on, Dana's going to come come and get his his uh, his propers. And his you're propers murdering- are- your murderous yeah. rampage on fighter on champions such as Yana Kunitskaya. I love oh, when you say that. Name. Name. I'll never, I'll <laughs> never get tired of hearing that. But it is what it, it is what it is. All right. Aldo might have, you know, during his ten year reign, he did have a couple bombs in there too. Not saying, not trying to compare both, but although I think Cyborg's you know, more jacked than Aldo ever was, even on roids. Yeah, but, yeah. But I think that she she played that game. You know, she rattled the cage enough, and she was like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and then you, you're fine when you're winning. But Dana's, Dana's going to turn that around the second he can. And I think that's what we're seeing. Yes, it wasn't a, a, a contest. Does she deserve a, a rematch? Yes. Just for the fact that she was that long standing, and she has the name value. Who the hell else are you going to put in there? All right, Megan Anderson? But because of a, a toenail business? No, no stop. Holly Holm, maybe. Cat's cat's eye is fucked. I mean, up. that's horrible. I felt so bad. No, there's that. damage actually behind the cornea. She um, might be out like forever at this point. No, right? no, she'll be back. Wow. I was listening to uh, UFC Unfiltered uh, today. Dude, she'll like, be back. That's scary. That's I mean, you know, only Bisping can pull off the squinty shit. You start getting a lady with like <laughs> the one eye looking like an actual cat with one eye. It's going to be some weird cyberpunk type shit. But I think that you, who else do you have in that division, man? Just just give her the rematch to see what happens. And you know what? What if she pulls it off again? Then you never have to talk about Cyborg to her, hear from her, speak about her. Like you can relegate her to Ryzen and she can eventually beef up to Gabby Garcia size. And we could finally see the two of them square away. You know, all that, all that testosterone. But yeah, my thing is, I think Dana wants to try and keep that division moving because of the lack of competitors that are in that division. But who? Then who? So then who do you have? Give her Megan Anderson. Give her that. that would, come on. Fuck what? off. Fuck what? off. That's really? They brought, they brought Megan Anderson in 
to beat Cyborg, just like they brought in Holly Holm to beat Ronda Rousey. I'd be more interested in seeing Holm Nunez than I would see. I would be in seeing, and no. that's but that's how little I want to see Megan Anderson fight. I mean, Nunez. I don't. I don't want to see Holly Holm and Nunez because I think. Nunez will beat her on the ground instead of the feet. Potentially, yeah, but that would still be more exciting, I think, fight-wise, because you're going to have just a long-rangey Megan try that long-rangey sniping bullshit for five rounds, but she's not going to last five rounds because eventually Amanda Nunez is going to be like, listen, I walk through Cyborg's bullshit, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you, and I don't even think that that Megan has a better chin than than Cyborg did. I, I think, think that's the women's more. division needs, though. Like somebody what? like New, like Nunez just knocking people out cold. I can see that, but then who else are you gonna have? Like, there's such a dearth of of challengers at, at that weight, and that's not even up doing these days. Hmm? Oh, Jesus! Not even doing these days. I mean, if anybody could, <laughs> the zombie mom. If anybody could do could do some work right there, I, I guess. I mean, you know, maybe just have Amanda beat up a a light post for ten minutes. Bring and Angela Magana back. It's like it looked like play, one play, one player again, playing two player on PlayStation, but nobody has the other remote, and just let Nunez just tee off. I, I, I mean, I know <laughs> you hate bro. I get it. It's justified, but I this is. I mean, the division, should... there's really nobody in the women's division at all. So what's the point? <laughs> you know what I mean? At least make it fun for us to watch. <laughs> I, I think I think home might beat her. I, I don't think Holm could do it. If anybody I don't. could. She might. I don't think she she like will all the time. But I think she presents a much better conundrum to for to solve than Megan does. You know? Plus I can barely see Megan if the lights are out too too high. Like that freaks me the fuck out. I can't stand it, bro. It's just like it's like a ghost fighter. And it's it just, just like, looks like know, tattoos dancing in the it's air. Tattoos, like it seriously looks like a reanimated corpse sometimes. Like in the yeah. right light, it's tattoos and like a tank top and some bottoms. And you're just like, what the fuck is going on here? It's like a glitch in Skyrim, right? And you got to <laughs> fight it. And it's just shooting arrows at you. And you're just like, ah, <laughs> fuck. I got to dodge these shits. I don't know where to aim, though. And then, you know, you have yourself. A, hey, bro, at least, hey, look at it this way. At least she figured out how to fill out her passport. Oh boy! Oh, thank God! Right? Jesus! I'm watching. I'm watching 90 Day Fiance, and apparently that's that is that is a low bar to set in terms of how to fill out passports. Oh my God! Jesus! I know the American public school system is is failing everybody, but fuck, man, we put out Einstein's comparatively. That's all I got. To say. I don't know. I mean, Russians get over here and get married a lot easier than it was for her to get into a fight out here to get paid. <laughs> I know. If she had been applying to be somebody's spouse, she then could have come in and then just like taken a side trip to a casino and had a fight. But like, well, just think if she had actually fought Cyborg and beaten her, then Brendan and Dana could have been Eskimo brothers again. Oh no, man! Really? You think so? You think uh, Megan and uh, oh, and Shab? What? Oh, I think so. Oh wow! wow. I think he would. I think so- he would. Trapping. No, I think I, well, I think he would. I mean, you know, he is but a man. But uh, I, I don't know. Rudy's he, killing me down there. <laughs> he has. I'm trying not to. I'm like specifically trying to 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 keep it, you know. But um, so yeah, go uh, go ahead. What are we? What's the next? I fucking hate you, both of you. Like, this is, <laughs> I don't want to live on this planet anymore. That's that's what that oh, means. God. It, to happen. it always makes me laugh to make a, a palish brown man turn red. It's happening, man. Oh, dude, he's going nuts. Oh, <laughs> shit. I just looked over. He's, he might be choking on something. God. Oh. Is he watching the Randy Couture video again? I mean, you know, if you <laughs> some water, he's sweating. And you pop the molly, you never know. Oh Lord! So yeah, I think I you hang, know, on, hang on one second, Rudy. Is, is there any way that you can you could show the the comments on YouTube? <laughs> uh, no, man. Well, uh, yeah, I can, but it would just crowd up the screen. It'll jack stuff up. So <laughs> let it crowd up the screen. <laughs> oh I'll work on it for next time. Yeah. Oh, it's always next time. Next time. 
next time. Sorry. We, have, we finally have a producer, and you're shitting on him. Shut the fuck up, Kevin. Hey, look. I got you, I got you rooting on this one. Shale Summon got to do it. It's my turn, too. Damn it. What? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I, I just, like I said, I can't disagree with what Dana's saying about not really wanting it, and honestly not wanting Cyborg to come back. Did she really make the company that much money? I really don't think so. She didn't save any cards. They had to put her on big cards. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, this was the biggest fight that she's had since she's been in the company. And this is even bigger than her fight with home to win the belt that they made for her. Yeah, she's problematic. She's like a she's a person with really good skills in a company that that thinks they're worth a lot more than they are. And then at the first chance that your supervisor gets to either write you up or put put the complete kibosh on you. They do so with with glee in their eyes. That's what happens. You know, we've all had those coworkers, you know, where it's just like, wow, okay, they're good, but they think they're amazing. And then next thing you know, they're 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 fucking jettisoned the minute they make a mistake, and rightfully so. You know, it worked as long as she was winning. They couldn't do this to her if she was winning. She like played that line right there, where a little bit more. Of, of her being that vocal and, and, and outspoken about her gripes with the company, God, right? Even winning, they would have found a way to just be like, okay, you know, they would have done, they would have doused the fucking Cheerios with Pico Grands of business and been like, ah, you got uh, you. You know? Uh, you know? <laughs> but, good. Yeah. but then, you know, uh, but th- this is the opening they wanted. They wanted to give her her walking papers, you know? Yeah, I mean, honestly, besides Nunes, who left there is for, for her to fight there? No, nobody. Like, yeah. Irrelevancy. She, she's fought everybody except the ring girls. <laughs> Yikes, man. You know? <laughs> and I think she'd be the ring guy. I think she'd be a li- lie. I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's, well, I, think, I think she actually she's going to fight Wanderlei. Yeah, that would be a pretty good fight. Oh, my God. I wouldn't be who able has, to tell who's Who has good. a deeper voice? Who has the bigger forehead? That's what I want to know. Who can smoke in the rain longer? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Right? Got that awning. Eat at jokes. You could rent space on that thing and get a sponsor. So if if not a fight with Cyborg, we talked about. So it's got to be Megan Anderson, right, against Nunes? I guess so. I mean, I'm not. that doesn't move the needle for me at all. It, it'd be great. To convince my girlfriend to buy another UFC, because the girl fights, you know, bring her to the yard. Buy so, another UFC. Yeah, I try at least officially to not show that I'm a pirate, right? Could you work with me, you fuck? But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it says the man in the hoodie. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A fucking basement with sixteen screens around him. <laughs> And not counting the three you can't. Al Qaeda call. Let's look for for its hideout bag. I hate you. My name is Omar. You're making <laughs> that for no fucking reason right now. But like, so anyway, I don't really think that there's much too much of anything to do with that with that division. It, it was made for her, and it'll die. Do they dissolve it. You think? Yeah. Well, no, but there's no way that Megan Anderson's making 135. So then I can't have her fight fucking gazelles and shit, like, and like, you know, other things that look like her. I don't know what to tell you. Like, she came in and I just had a lukewarm reception on, on you know, I thought she was, I, she looked better against worse competition. So maybe I, I, I well, I also think it left a bad taste in your mouth, the whole passport thing. I, I'm, I don't like that at all. I really, you know, because like, if she had come, she would have struck the, the iron while it was hot. Who the fuck knows at this point? Maybe one of those. Her kickboxing is amazing. She could, she could kick one of those long rangey shots could have done some damage. You know, like we're maybe the mystique is is gone with uh, for a bit. Mm -hmm. So who knows what could have happened? Um, But again, and I love Kat Zingano, but I don't think Kat was coming out of that fight alive. I think she would have grappled her if it hadn't been. Eventually, I think she would. I would. I will never count Kat out. After I saw her performance against Nunez, I know it was a different Nunez. I know for sure, but that was a fight that a lot of people were like, "Yeah, were you winning it? Were you losing it?" And she came. Notice, back. notice how since Nunez took care of the the bronchial issues that she had, she's been ungoddamn stoppable. I mean, there's something to be said. Cardio, cardio yeah, issues cardio don't really 
get questioned yeah. anymore. No, she trains. I think she's able to probably train harder. And she's all, you know, so she's always increasing her levels at this point. I know we gave her epic amounts of shit uh, when she had everybody it. Everybody did. I mean, everybody I mean, did. Because he had to. That's one yeah, of the yeah, things. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's kind of weird. You know what I mean? The night it, of. Yeah, it looked weak as fuck. It looked like she, no, she had mental issues. That wasn't whatever. But I think she th- did have those issues for sure. But mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think they were at the point that let's, you know, kill a fight that night. I think you either know a week prior or mm-hmm. you fucking fight and you call it a day, you know. Or it just could have been that bad. I mean, you think you can get through it? Maybe not. I don't know. But you look at her now, especially in that fight. Because, like, I was talking to a few people while that fight was going on. She wasn't pot shotting. She mm-hmm. was picking her shots. Mm-hmm. And... Working angles, footwork. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when, when Cyborg right went down and came back up, she wasn't Shane Carwinning herself against yeah. Brock Lesnar and just yeah. throwing whatever she could. She waited. She stayed calculated until yeah. she put her out. Yeah, stayed stayed surgical. Uh, cut the cut the cage off. You know, um, yeah. was composed during the Berserker Storm, which is what, what I think rattles a lot of people. But um, you know, it's I hate to be this sexist dude, but I think both of them train with guys like a lot. Yeah. So I think that that has something to do with it. Like, I don't think you're going to scare Nunez if you're, you know, a regular lady coming in there with, with wild stuff. I, I think, you know, um, the so, way they hit, you'd almost have to, cause like, how could you sit there and put like one of your other female fighters yeah. in against one of those two who hit that hard? No, there's, nah. I've been, we've both been a part of a, a bunch of gyms and I, I, I could maybe count definitely on one hand but maybe on just a few fingers, p- women that I've seen that I could put in there with one of those two and not feel bad about it. Yeah. You know, and, that's, and that's saying a lot, you know, because we're, this, we're both part of big, we've both been part of big East Coast gyms, East Coast networks. So it's a big sample size. And I still don't know of five, five ladies that I would say, hey, yeah. And I feel like a dickhead. Could you imagine that. Paige Van Zant in that cage with Nuno? Oh, sweet Christ, I'm a cross lady. Dude. That would be, you know, it, she would punch the silicone and, like into her eyes. Like she would I was about to her. say that would be a waste of two new blouse bunnies. I'm saying, you know, and, and they're probably like the spiffy ones with the RFID chips in them. So you don't want to mess up that tech. You know, you can just, you know, read them the serial serial numbers and everything. I see you, Rudy. <laughs> you, know, no, <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying. Let's uh, what what else we got here? <laughs> I can't. Yo, he's got me dying over here. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no, 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 no. So can't, yeah, I mean, I, I guess there really it. isn't there really isn't much that you can do with that. It's like, but again, we talked about this before. They're doing this champ champ thing to death to where it's just not even fucking special anymore. No, no, it's 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 jump the shark now. What do you, what do you need to? To, to get that spark back, a champ, 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 like... Mm. It's not even special. It, it's no. just not now. No. Like, it's awesome, but it's just like, okay, now every pay-per-view, it looks like they're going for the champ, champ thing. It's like it's interim titles. titles. Yeah, but what's our next one that we got going on now? DJ Dillashaw and Henry Cejudo. Yeah, and, and that's champ the best to close out a division, too. That has a slight... That's why win. I hope Cejudo wins. Me I too. hate... I hate Henry Cejudo. He, I'm not a fan of Henry Cejudo, but I'm rooting oh, for him in this fight. And no. it's nothing against TJ Dillashaw. It's a stick it right up Dana's ass. Right up the ass, Dana. <laughs> right up there. <laughs> so and around. So Jesus Christ. But uh yeah, um, I hate I hate Cejudo as much as the next guy, and that's that's to say a lot. You know, mm-hmm. and he's he's a Hispanic compatriot, which is weird for me to to step and he's out. an Olympian, which is awesome. Exactly, real American hero. You but know, he's an asshole. He's a straight dickhead, and so I really do hope that he. Uh, so for me to say that I hope that he wins is, is saying a lot, but I do hope. Just not, so that, to jump, not to jump off on a tangent here. Yeah, but yeah, because I know this isn't one of our topics, but I was thinking about this today. Mm. Can you imagine how amazing it would be if Dillashaw misses weight? And everything that Demetrius Johnson said about why he wasn't jumping to fight TJ yeah. just vindicated his whole reasoning for not fighting him. And all those idiots that were saying that he was afraid 
would I mean they probably wouldn't go anywhere because most of them are Connor fans anyway yeah. and have no fucking brain. But I how amazing think, would that be? I, it would be tremendous, but I don't think anybody's. I think even Demetrius Johnson doesn't give a fuck anymore. He got he's probably getting paid more than he ever got paid. To find I him. care for Demetrius Johnson. Oh, okay, so people shit on that guy's legacy. It's good to know. I'm positive that he's getting. I care. Wild amounts of Thai bot, and he doesn't give a fuck about what's going on. And he gives a fuck about his legacy. Because he, he if, he if he didn't give a fuck about his legacy, he wouldn't have been bitching about having all his belts. Bitching at Dana because Dana used one belt for most of his defenses until he's, he got all of them. He's his legacy is well, well ensconced. There's nothing to worry about. Come on. There's nothing to worry about. He's a legend. There's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Famous last words. I'm just saying. I mean, unless he goes out there and gets smoked by some Japanese fucks we don't never heard of, which could happen. They're crafty. They make robots and shit, but like I don't see Well what FC, do they have soccer kicks? Oh yeah. I think so. I'd be fine. Yeah. Roger Huerta got fucking kicked yes. out the Alamo. That's right. And, you know, fucking poor Dude, could you imagine if, like, somebody kicks Mighty Mouse through the ropes? Oh, my God. <laughs> they, do it, they do it in a cage, though, so I think we're golden, all right? Oh, and face stops. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I just... I, I, I'm not, like, gleefully looking forward to that. I'm just saying his legacy's fine, you sick bastard. <laughs> You're over there like, oh, imagine the Freddy Krueger. Well, no, but, I mean, it's just I, like what he said I, about I, TJ, you know, why he wouldn't fight him. That would be it. Would vindicate him, I think. It would. I'm not. T- I'm not disagreeing there. I'm just also saying that we probably don't give a straight fine French with fuck, man. He's gonna still stay uh, streaming on Twitch. All right. He's gonna fucking advertise for Tiger Beer or whatever the fuck they drink. Dude, right there. If that happens and TJ Dillashaw misses weight, if you don't think Demetrius Johnson is going to say something about it, I hope he does. I hope he does. But again. I just think that he's got sacks of Japanese Thai money. Even though it has nothing to do with, with Japan. Uh, no, there's, there's, there's Japanese money flowing through what You I'm are saying. racist, sir. If you catch my drift. I'm racist. I'm just a realist, all right? Jesus Christ. <laughs> they got to pay tribute. They got to pay tribute to the Triads and the Yakuza. They're double fucked, all right? That's why the Thais are so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> God, I miss when we used to run off on tangents like this. Screw structure. We don't do structure anymore. We just have fun. <laughs> All right. We do have fun. So let's jump on to our next topic. Um, this one, it's a little bit of a Homer thing for me. Of course it is. Because I love Corey Anderson. I love him to death. <laughs> so after the, you know, the John Jones fight, Corey Anderson came out. Put on a, a pretty good performance against Latifi, who was like ranked what number three or number five. Yeah, he was Wherever up there. He, he was up there. Yeah, I don't know how, but he was up there. Um, Eliminate. And, and you know, Anderson's been a little bit vocal about how much bullshit it is that John Jones. I don't care if it's a half a picogram, three quarters of a fucking picogram. The fucking asshole had turned a ball in his system. Mm. And if you're telling me that it's from a sample from a fucking year and a half ago, a lot of people are fucked. Yeah. If that if that's the case, which it's yeah. not. So fuck you, Jeff Davinsky and you know Joe Rogan. I can't believe. It. See, it. Joe Rogan should have had Eddie Bravo sitting there because Eddie Bravo would have been like, "Nah, I you know, I watched the YouTube video. Do the research, bro. That's a lie." Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that one? CNN. Uh, yeah, Street yeah, Street. exactly. Yeah. So you know, Corey Anderson was a little bit pissed off because with it switching from Vegas to LA, he had his sponsors and stuff like that. They weren't giving them tickets. He had to purchase tickets for people to go. Mm. So he was a little pissed off, and he thinks he has the right to fight John Jones. I don't disagree with it, but I don't agree with it. You, you know what I mean? I got you. I guess, he, yeah. I mean, he's won his last three fights. He's won his last three fights against top guys in the division. But they're giving the fight to Anthony Smith, who has, you know, some 
marquee names. F- fuck that. All right. Both and both time of them. Out. Time out. <clears throat> now listen, and this is no disrespect to Anthony Smith. I know Fight Book had a good part in Anthony Smith getting signed to the UFC because of an article that was written by our buddy Jensi. Nothing against Anthony Smith. But he does not have a snowball's chance in hell with John Jones. I don't think he's got a snowball's chance in hell against Corey Anderson. I think Corey Anderson will grind him to death, which is what Corey does. I understand it's not an exciting style for most people to watch, but he's a grinder. And he's good at what he does. That's why this is called mixed martial arts and not fucking kickboxing. You want to watch kickboxing? Lion Fight is a wonderful promotion. This is mixed martial arts. If you can't stop it, that's your fucking problem. So, I think it should have been Corey Anderson against Anthony Smith for the right to fight John Jones. That's what I think. What do you think? I think you need to take a bus, take a shuttle, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> Big yes. uh, I think there's no reason for any other fight for John Jones he either has to fight all members of USADA at the same time. <laughs> all right? Just have fucking 10,000 ducks try to kill a horse. You know what I'm saying? Instead of, <laughs> instead of a thousand horses trying to kill a million ducks or whatever the fucking analogy is. There's no reason to be discussing any fight for John Jones that's not Daniel Cormier or some amalgam of a heavyweight fighter. All right? This the the second it was announced. I mean, I, yeah, I love Corey. He, he's a he, we're we're being homers. God bless him, Anthony Smith. You know, Jency's awesome. She does good writing. Love her to death too. But holy balls! All right, nobody wants to see any fight. What were they talking about the second that he won? Was all the tweets that Daniel mm-hmm. Cormier was throwing? And you know why? Because that's the only fucking fight that makes sense aside from a Brock Lesnar. Aside from, who, I don't know, if, if you get Roman Reigns to stop doing treatments for cancer and you have him fight, I'd be interested in seeing that for fuck's sake. Like, just, no. What, what is going on? You're trying to su- suddenly hope that, that Jones has an off night and you're get, then you give legitimacy to the rest of a relatively dead uh, set of contenders? Sorry, it's Corey not- Anderson just tweeted something. I want to make sure he's not tweeting about us. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> I love him to death, but neither one of them should should have that fight right now. Neither one of them should. It should be Cormier versus Jones seventeen more times until one of them dies in training John camp. Jones versus Chuck Liddell. Oh, no. <laughs> I swear, I do. It's and have him fight with all testosterone. Have him fight Uberim and Ryzen. I'm telling you, there's so many other fights that I would want to see. And we're getting to the point where Daniel Cormier is not any any younger. John Jones is not old, but you know what? He's probably done enough chemical substances where his bone age is 65. I want to see substantive, meaningful fights. I don't have anything against Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. I don't know why I, t- I turned him into a Anthony. great guy. Anthony Smith. I have nothing against Corey Anderson. But neither do I have anything like – they're not ready. And they're not at that at that point, either one of them, right? So I just want to see greatness versus greatness at this point while we still have it. So if Daniel Cormier is not in that conversation, I don't want to fucking hear about anybody getting signed to fight John Jones. I don't know why he's getting this gift in Anthony Smith. I'm sorry, he is. There's lucky puncher's uh, possibility. Yeah, may, you know, what are you trying to do? Rumble 2.0 with a little better fight IQ, I guess. But, but seriously, guys, like this... When I when I saw that that was even on the table, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Because at this point, you're 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 wasting greatness. What are you gonna do for DC then? You're gonna have him fight the winner of what? Ngannou versus versus Cain Velasquez? That's not good. <laughs> you know, I, I, know, I wanted to do something to piss you off because I'm pissed off at just the prospect of this fucking fight. That just doesn't doesn't make any goddamn sense. That pisses me off. <sighs> yeah, you know. Um... Uh, it's hard because, you know, and I talked to our buddy, Sean, um, about this because I was like, you know, Corey's kind of setting himself up to be the bad guy here. You know what I mean? He really is. He's starting to set him up to be the bad guy in a situation where he he really doesn't have to. And I understand his frustration. One thousand percent 
understand his frustration about having to move his family members and everything. You know, some people are just like, oh, it was only from Las Vegas to L.A. Yeah, they got to rebuy the ticket. You know what I mean? It's a lot for, and especially when you're, you know, I don't know what his financial situation is, but maybe he doesn't have that type of big dick money to be, to be, you know, dropping ducats on, on wild stuff. Um, he, he doesn't get the money he deserves. I know that. I know the UFC should be, should be writing him checks uh, of a greater magnitude. You know, that I'll say for sure. But dude, like, this is not a good look for anybody involved because John Jones beats Anthony Smith, which I think 99% possibility, 99.9% possibility at this point. What mm-hmm. does that gain him? Oh, wow. You beat a dude from Oklahoma named Lionheart. God bless you. Like, there's nothing there to advance any narrative whatsoever. And, you know, we're all fans of violence, but we like a little story. You know, we like a little foreplay with our violence too. So what are you going to do? Corey, Corey goes in there and I mean, do I think he has a better shot than Anthony, but do I think he grinds John Jones? No, not if uh, our boy uh, Daniel Cormier can do it. You know, I think he could, but he just didn't. There's nothing there, man. What does DC got to say about all of this? Like, look at his, is his Twitter account locked for just him going off into spasmatic fits of rage? Like I'm about to, because Jesus Christ, what's he? Yeah. He's being left out in the cold. You have to vacate that belt, right? To let this happen, to let John Jones versus Gustafson be for something meaningful. And then they don't got him signed up to fight anybody heavyweight. His arch nemesis is back in. Uh, legitimate is somewhat legitimate contention. Pika Graham's notwithstanding. What do you have that happened then? Yeah, no, you're you're right. And like you know, and you don't want it's not like we're I know it sounds like we're bashing Anthony Smith. And really we're not. It's just there's John Jones and then there is the rest of the division. And it was like that when DC was there, except there was John Jones, DC and the rest of the division. Exactly. It's like the NBA when Michael Jordan was around. All right. Except except there was no social media and the and and the actual news media had a little bit more respect. So they weren't exposing all the crazy stuff that Jordan was up to. But Jordan still got his. Yeah. You, you both know what I'm talking about, right? That yeah. little, you know, like like that. <laughs> there's there's all sorts of conspiracy theories around that. But he it was him. And the rest of the NBA once he got into his group, right? And it just it that's it. And there's sadly, you can look at a whole generation of, of NBA stars that don't have rings because of Michael Jordan. So that's just how it was at that point. That's not to say that my, you know, my boys, the Knicks, didn't deserve a ring or two here or there, but they were never gonna get it as long as they were in the same fucking conference as Jordan and 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 his uh his pack of scallions there. But like Dude, so what are you gonna do? Like you didn't then you wouldn't just arbitrarily make Michael Jordan play, you know, randos, right? You just I I don't want to see this happen. You know, yeah, I, you know, yeah. And with, with this fight being the main event for for UFC two thirty five, um, which is I mean, they're, this March second card they are stacking the hell yeah, yeah. out of it. Um, Cody Garbrandt. Is is returning to fight Pedro Munoz? Um, yeah, <coughs> one of the light heavyweight fight. Yeah, one of the light heavyweight fights is Ovin St. Pru is fighting. So why not have Corey run that fight back against St. Pru? Because that is the fight that is going to haunt Corey for the yeah. rest of his career mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, that's going to why he's getting to that next level or yeah. being at that next level, etc. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean? Like that, to to me, and that's what I had said to Sean. I was like, that fight is going to haunt him forever. And Sean's like, yeah, but that's what, you know, OSP is known for. You're right. He does. He he finds a way to pull it out for the most part. Let's not forget that it took John Jones five rounds to barely eke out a decision against Ovin St. fucking I I think the picograms were off, though. That one. Yeah, that might have been the only clean John Jones we've ever seen. Potentially. Who knows? You're right. It's sad, but it's, I still want to see that versus DC. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, it's no, you're, it's just like the way they're stacking this card. Now, look, this card 
is a unit. This this card shouldn't even be discussed. I hate that we're bringing it up because every time we bring up one of these big cards before it happens, people start yeah. dropping yeah. like yeah. Like Tommy Toehold. The injury bug comes out and fuck it. Yeah, they just start like they just get plucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're throwing Usman versus uh Oh no, uh, what is it? What the fuck is his name? I forget. Oh Ma- yeah, Matt Hamill. Oh, Don't worry, Rudy. Matt Hamill. Matt Hamill. Yeah. No, stop. Right. He didn't hear you say it. Woo! That's it. That's... <laughs> Guys, all right, I'm halfway there. That hurts me. Right, um, what what were you saying now, Omar? Was it, uh, is that the one where Usman versus Woodley is being discussed? Too? Usman Woodley. Oh God, I love that Colby got stepped over. Me too. Uh, Colby, go help your boy Donald. Go build that wall so I can get my fucking tax return. You got nothing that's, else better to that's do. That's you saying that too. Like you're fed up with the standing for Donald Trump. Like that should say. I'm fed up with not being able to get my taxes. <laughs> That's you know, really what's going to bend the revenue. He doesn't have a tax return coming his way. You can't you can't write off buying like $10 hookers for your videos. Like that you can't, so that's not a write off. Horrible. It was like a sex doll with extra batteries is what he really had. I don't know how he didn't get electrocuted with that much electrical equipment in a fucking pool. And like, I don't know what he's complaining about. He's got himself a UFC belt that he gets to have at home so he could tell girl, "Hey, look. Look, I won." something once look check it out you know he's like tim sylvia and he wears that thing everywhere like, oh yeah. yeah he's i'm he's sure that on at church i'm sure and, and a lot of people are bashing that you know uzman doesn't why doesn't uzman deserve the shot uzman beat he deserves, Damon Maya. he deserves a shot as much as anybody right now and i'm just happy to see woodley active again and and stay you know that's what i give a shit about again my whole thing with greatness i want to keep seeing great fighters fight all right, and, and this makes a hell of a lot more sense than anything you got. Uh, that says Denise Smith's name fighting Josh Holmes. I can't get over that. I, when it was announced, I was so mad. I was like, What the fuck are they doing? They're squandering this because you know, God forbid that John Jones gets hurt, or God forbid he does not bodies again, or some bullshit, and they let him fight this bullshit fight, but then he doesn't fight again for another two years. We don't know how long we have him for. Let's not squander him on this bullshit. Well, I guess the longer the picogram stay in your system, the better you become. Like you, you age with fine wine, oh, adding gee, the I, right yeah. kind of ingredients to it. I guess. You know what? Like, I, I, I'd be right there for it. All right, I'm feeling every bit of 34 at this point. So you know, I'm not going to get mad. But then again, I'm not peeing to go to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't. <laughs> like, they're not going to say, "Hey, you got testosterone in you." No, they're going to be probably excited that I do. So I'm fired up to go do what I got to do. But like. I just I want to see good fighters fight good other good fighters and great fighters fight other great fighters like and things that we're going to look back and go oh wow I remember seeing that run you know and I think we have two people in that division that are like that they're like Hagler Hearns or, or, or Gotti Ward where it's like you want to see you get excited to see that rivalry go down even with how it's been slightly one sided you know have them do it in heavyweight but. That card looks bananas, and I'm excited to also see what we got. Robbie Lawler versus Ben Askren on there. That's mm-hmm. a, oh, that's a mashup that I want to see. We're gonna holy moly! I think Askren takes it, but like I still want to see it happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all he needs is that one UFC win. Yeah, and then he's that's he, all he needs automatically. Automatically, then he's he's what whatever happens with Usman versus um, uh, Woodley, right? I mean, unless, but they're training partners, so then. Askren does not need a UFC title. He doesn't need one, but it'd be great to get one. But he's not going to fight Woodley. So then he goes up and fights, so who's that 185? Wait, what happened? Who's that 185 then? Have him just jump up and do that then. Who is the 185 champ? Hey, man, you're the leader of this ship here, all right? Uh, You know what? I don't even know because nobody even cares. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Are we really? I'm blanking on it too, dude. I feel like a fucking shithead. Rudy, save us. Who's the 185 pound champ oh for? Oh god, this is terrible. No, don't give us the card, Rudy. Oh, oh. fucking uh, Robert Whitaker. How you doing? There you go. So yeah, I, I could watch that. I really would. I think. Rudy I almost said George St. Pierre. I kind of would have been right. I mean, <laughs> technically, you know, except for some tummy trouble, but um. I, hell, I'd like to see that fight as a super fight. Let's not do champ champ bullshit. Let's just have 
best fighters fight the best fighters. How did I forget about Rob Whittaker, man? That's I feel because like, he doesn't fight. Yeah, that's true. He, 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 he's Mr. Glass. I swear to God, he just you know. I mean, it's fucking movie, by the way. Yeah, I am excited. I want to go see it. But uh, yeah. you know, and then you have Jeremy Stevens versus Zabit is another oh, one. Zabit is gonna kick the living shit out of him. I can't wait. Out of I cannot wait. He's he's gonna yeah. He's, he's gonna do some work there, any which way he wants to. He's gonna mm-hmm. out grapple him, or he's gonna do some wild kickboxy bullshit. You're gonna see Tong Po come out and fucking. Well, because it's obvious that they're not gonna try and do the Zabit or the uh, the Zabit and Yair fight anymore. Yair don't want any of that smoke. Who does though? I think Jeremy's one of the only dumbest fucking guys there that I love. He's got more balls and brains that'll take that fight. And that's what we need the Jeremy Stevens of the world to do: you step up and make these fights so that the Zabits. Can build some cred and then finally get a haircut. And- I mean, isn't to beat like one of the most unassuming people? Like, if you walked down the street, I swear you, yeah. saw, you would think he owned like a like a, a kiosk that sold knockoff fucking transistor radio. I know, no, he said he replaces iPhone covers. I always look at him and I'm like, <laughs> that's just taking the shit off, and he's got the little the little hair dryer. <laughs> he's just like, oh, I gotta get this one down. She ain't got seven more in the queue. You know, like you just see him, or he's he's going out for kebabs, you know, with his pals, and then he he's looks so and, unassuming, but he's a goddamn nightmare. And from everywhere too, it's like that. It's just he's. It's one of those like uh, what Rory McDonald wanted to be, and what he was for a little while until his nose decided to uh, tr- uh, betray him forever and ever. So I think that's it's like one of those in every facet of the fight, he's really really decent, if mm-hmm. not. Um, so. Yeah, I just think I think Zabit's gonna do some work there. And then what we got? We got Tisha Torres versus Hylia Zhang here. Like, what's uh, what's going on? No, wait, Wiley Zhang. Wiley Wiley Zhang. No, I'm sorry, that can't be the name. She's not Kyle. It, like it sounds like a strip club on Route 35 in South Amboy. What Wiley Zhang? Yeah, it's better than the Russian star over here on Pulaski Highway. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Pass that thing when I go to Coles, and I'm like, whoa, no. Dude, what's another one? Uh, Diego Sanchez versus Mickey Gall. I hope Gall pushes his shit in. Really... Oh, come on, man. Your coach already beat Diego. Let him go, man. Oh, it calls a Jersey boy. How are you rooting against Gall? I'm not. I never would, but don't don't be that that nasty to, to Diego. Dude, yeah, he's crazy he enough. Go. He will find you where you live. Okay. And stab you in your sleep and then do yoga like right after. It's fine. <laughs> then there goes his credit card. <laughs> play games. I'm not here to play. <laughs> here. How do you think that fight's gonna go, honestly? I mean what, Mickey, I think is Mickey ready for someone as seasoned no. as Diego? No, I think there's gonna be probably a, a a moment or two in that fight where he's gonna have to really skate through adversity. Because Diego's gonna, Diego's one of those guys that'll bring the kitchen sink from the first fucking second. He hasn't slowed down in all these years. He is. Well, a- I mean, okay, yeah. What you think he slowed down? I mean, I don't think he can do hard math as well as he used to. Do what? Hard math as well as he used to. Wow. I mean, so maybe he slowed down a little bit. I mean. You know, he's my my little Mexican potato over there. But I, uh, I think he's he's really he's one of those guys. Just gonna bring it from the first from the first second. Like Mickey knows that. I hope he doesn't go in there with that bullshit notion of I want to strike with his chin up because mm-hmm. Diego will catch him and like throw seventeen punches to Mickey's one miraculously somehow. So if Mickey, not goes everybody, in, not everybody could be raging L. No, I mean sometimes raging L. He comes outside of his body, you know what I'm saying, and and like puts it to another level that I think it even impresses him himself when he rolls back the tape. Like it has to. Some of his latest latest performances have been tremendous, but Mickey, I think, uh, he weathers those storms, and and then he uh, he does enough damage on the ground. And uh, Diego cuts easy, so you can always just bank on that. Give him a couple elbows, uh, you know, make it rain, blood, and uh, yeah, he cuts easy, but he still has as much stamina and whatever as Dr. he's Stoppage. bleeding all over the place. Dr. Stoppage. Just, call, just get get a stoppage. That's one of those things where you almost want to like go for a stoppage. The doctor's because yeah. I don't think you're going to... He's not going to give up. You're right. Mm-mm. 
you know, and I don't think Mickey has enough dynamite in anything that he throws to, to put him down. So if you don't put down Diego, you're, are you going to out-grapple him? Potentially, potentially not. I don't know. For MMA grappling, I don't know. Like, Mickey's great on the ground, for sure. Mickey's got great jiu-jitsu, yeah. but Diego's wrestling is second to none. Yeah, and he's got pretty decent, you know, tier two. Uh, he's not know, easy to submit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All. Like, he has, like, good second chance takedowns. Like, in terms of, you know, so he does the chain wrestling really well for MMA, which is always – it's another layer, you know, you can have a really great first attempt, but if you're great at the second and the third ones, you're, you're doing some damage in MMA. And I think that's what, that's what he's gotten this far on. You can always go to those, you know, but there's my girl, Holly. Let's talk about my girl, Holly. What Aspen, Holly gets Aspen led. Who's Aspen led? Right, that sounds, that sounds like one of the fantastic Forest kids. In the, uh, in the words of the, Famous Clubber Lang, whoever Aspen Lad is, it's dead meat. Yeah, pretty much. This is a, you want to talk about squash matches? They're throwing Holly prime rib named Aspen Lad. You know, so maybe this her. is the, maybe this is the fight that gets Holly against Nunes. Right? Honestly, I'd really like to see that more, you know. Or, but, you uh, know, this poor soul, Aspen Lad, if she wins, she gets to go up against Nunes. No, you're just you're talking crazy talk, but it makes sense, and that's why I hate it. Because that could happen. If it makes she sense, the UFC's probably not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, she'll 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 win convincingly and then it'll call they'll call it a day. It, it, it very well could happen. You're not so Yeah, sure. so I mean this is this is the card, you know. It's sure, it's crazy. Sure. Um it's something that you would see on UFC three, you know, on your on your Xbox or PlayStation. <laughs> That you would never have a doubt that anything would go wrong, but I guarantee you that it, they're just going to start dropping like flies. Absolutely. There's going to be contract issues. Somebody's going to not make weight. Somebody's going to get hurt. We might honestly get left with Mickey Gall versus Jeremy Stevens somehow. No, like some fucking no. Weird. We're going to get um. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, I think Tyron Woodley and Kamara Usman is definitely going to happen. Ben uh, Askren and Robbie Lawler is definitely going to happen. And maybe it's a beat in Jeremy Stevens. The rest of it, I'm not sure. Especially the John Jones and Anthony Smith thing. I automatically assume every time John Jones is going to be on the card, it's going to be canceled. Yeah. Which is part of my ire on, you know, have him fight tomorrow and have him fight somebody else. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not like he trained before for some of his title defenses anyway, right? Mm. So fuck it. It's like circumvent some of that shit. I mean, they are making this. I mean, March 2nd, that's really not that far away. No, it's super close. And I'm excited. Like when I when I first like it's one of those things where like you're unwrapping the present and you see the first part of the present and you think it's something else, right? And you're super excited. And then you see the full box and you're like, shit, I got socks. So it's like, no, no, no. You see John Jones and you're like, oh, okay. And then you see, I mean, again, not knocking Anthony Smith. He can beat the shit out of me, but I just want to see like landmark fights that we're going to talk about, you know, five, 10 years from now, because well, we have one of those generational talents. Knock on wood. If John Jones can make it without any issues, maybe this is how you, you milk that money cow. You don't let him take time off in between training camps. You sign him up for another fight as soon as it's done. So that way he can't, he can't, you know, go out to the wayside he can't meet up with those friends to go get that, you know, that kilo that of blow. Package, yeah. yeah, you know, that kilo of blow and, you know, some things to shoot in his ass cheek to make himself bigger because he's got to be in training camp. I heard, I heard money cow and milking the money cow, and I'm thinking about Randy Couture's dick kicking. And he's just not, not, not going to you should end the show playing that famous music video. <laughs> There's children that watch the show. Oh, good. All right, guys. So listen, this was a lot of fun for this uh, for this episode. Please, if we offended you, it's just jokes, folks. Believe me, it's 2019. It's going to get a hell of a lot worse. Um, we uh, we just love having fun here. Um, and I was happy to finally be able to do the show with you guys um, just to uh, start this this beautiful year off. So for our favorite sponsor, 
Fight Book MMA, Black Hole Jiu Jitsu, Madama Jiu Jitsu, and our buddy over there at 80K Fightwear. I am your host, the Reverend Tommy D, joined with me by my brother. I missed him so much. El Profesor Omar Sangarima. And Rudy over there is one of the greatest producers in the world. Hopefully next week we get those those comments up on the screen so everybody watching can see because I want to watch it back and see the comments and see you guys jumping in. Yeah, but yeah, but you know what? Maybe we could answer some questions and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not capable of. I mean, neither are you. Don't fucking Oh, yes, to. you are. I mean, you put together three bombs <laughs> while routing the next fucking route for your mules to not only get people into the country, but getting your hero- your heroin into the next state. You are a genius, sir. I'll never be back, I guess. Like, I'm going to be in jail. <laughs> Oh my God. Hey, listen, guys. <clears throat> this was a lot of fun tonight. We will be back next Monday night. We will have. Is there an event this weekend? I, I don't believe. So. I think there's. Are they staying away because of the playoffs? I think that's normally what they do, right? Um, I want to see. There might be a situation. Because if there is a, if there is an event this weekend, shitter's full. That was a little ding ding. January nineteenth. Nope. All right. Yeah. So. So we will be back next week with. Uh, well, we could do. You know what? We could do the card breakdown for T.J. Dillashaw and uh, your brother Henry. If you want. <laughs> Tremendous hair. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, everybody. Listen, we will see you next week. We are Pride Rules Podcast. Good night.